Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. My name is Michael. Today we're going to be continuing with our nonlinear deformer tutorial series. You can find the nonlinear deformers in the deform menu. Nonlinear, and I'll break off this menu here. We've already gone over the bend deformer and the flare deformer, and you can check out those links to see those tutorials about those particular deformers. Today we'll be going over the sign deformer. Look into the options here. If you're following along with these deformer tutorials, you'll see some similarities as we go through. This one, for example, also has a low bound and a high bound option. And then for the sign deformer, specifically, we have amplitude, wavelength, drop off, and offset. So to properly demonstrate the sign deformer, I think I will close this and let's create something to deform. Uh, so we can use a cylinder as a good example. So let's go to create polygon primitives cylinder and I'm going to go over here in the channel box and take my subdivisions caps down to zero because we don't need those but we do need geometry going up along the cylinder so I'm going to increase subdivisions height from one to something like ten like so so with the cylinder selected I'll go to nonlinear deformers here, which again you can find under the form nonlinear. You have your list here. So I'm going to go into the sign options again and go to edit reset settings. Make sure I have my default settings here and hit create. So when I hit wireframe by pressing the 4 key, you'll see as I have my cylinder selected, there's this purple line going through the center of the cylinder, and that is the sign deformer. By default, the sign deformer will attempt to place itself in the center of the object that you've applied it to. Because I have a cylinder here, it's pretty straight up and down, and it's pretty straightforward in how it's going to be centered, but if you have a more uh, non-symmetrical object or something that's a bit more interesting in shape, you may need to select your sign deformer and actually rotate it into the position that you want it to be in for the object that you're deforming. But before we get into all that, let's look into how the sign deformer works. Now a sign if you're in, if you know anything about wavelengths and such, a sine wave is kind of a concentric waving motion, like you see, like in sound waves and such, when you see them uh, visualized. So if I select my cylinder or the deformer, either way, I select the deformer. Actually, in this case, we can see a little better. I'm gonna go back to shaded view, which is the five key. I'm going to click my sign one input in the channel box here, and you see I have those same settings from our options from before. So I'm going to go ahead and close the nonlinear uh, menu now that we have these settings here available to us. So we have envelope, which is an additional setting that was not in the options from before, but I'll go into that in a second. So first, the way that you can get the sign to form to do anything is you have to increase the amplitude. I'm holding down control and minimize clicking and dragging as I have the amplitude channel selected. You can see how that change happens. So going into negative makes it go this way, positive makes it go this way. And if I press the 4 key again, you can see how that line that was going through our cylinder has changed shape now. And it's got this wave shape going through the deformer. It also has this line sticking out at the middle of the sign deformer as well which we'll get back into what all these things do in a second. I'm going to hide the grid for now just so it's a bit easier to see. And in wireframe, actually, it might be easier to see if I change the background color to something that's, that makes things stand out a little more, maybe black. You have to let me know if uh, you still can't see very well with wireframe. So the amplitude controls how large the sign deformer wave is. Like so. If I can go all the way up here, or I'll go to the other way. And you also see as I go amplitude of negative, the sign deformer kind of disappears. I think that might be a bug. And I'm not, I'm not sure if that's a 2016 bug or because I have the educational license. I'm not sure. But when it's positive, you can see the deformer. When it's negative, you can't. So just keep that in mind. If, if for whatever reason you see that mine disappears, it's probably because my amplitude is a negative value. I'll try and keep it positive <laughs> for now. So I can increase the amplitude and it makes this 
kind of zigzag shape, larger or smaller. And you can also increase the wavelength to have more waves within the sine wave or less, like so. Now, depending on how much geometry your object has, will control how much it's able to represent the wave motion that you're trying to indicate. So you'll see here my cylinder is getting very jagged as it's trying to maintain the shape of this deformer as I increase its wavelength. If I go back to my cylinder and increase the subdivision's height beyond 10, I get a much more accurate result because of the amount of geometry this particular deformation requires. So I've increased it up to past 40. See so now it's a bit more accurate with my sine wave deformer. So you need to make sure you have the geometry available to deform the object as much as you want it to. Go back to the shaded view so you can kind of see the resulting shape here after applying this much uh, wavelength to the sine deformer. So wavelength is the number of waves and amplitude is how large those waves are. So you can do something like this very quickly with a cylinder shape. So amplitude, wavelength, next we can see like an offset. And you see as I offset the wavelength, it's making the wave travel up and down the deformer. So if you wanted a particular shape with that combination of amplitude and wavelength, but it's not, the curves are not exactly where you want them to be, you can change the offset and have those waves travel up and down the deformer to get to the shape you want. Also, all these settings are keyable for animation, so you could just have this as an animation that just plays through your scene to make something look, you know, pretty interesting uh, in your scene, depending on what it is. It could be almost looks like a waterfall, <laughs> pretty static waterfall, but still. And then we have drop off. Let's press uh, four for wireframes and kind of look at what's going on here. So with a drop-off of 1, the sine waves in the middle are higher than the ones toward the end of the deformer. As we get down a drop-off of 0, we're back to our normal shape. And I go, as I go into a negative 1, the sine waves at the end of the deformer are larger than the ones in the middle. Let me increase my amplitude, maybe make it a little bit more uh, apparent what's happening. So this is a negative one drop off. So the waves that are in the middle are smaller than the waves on, on the outside. As I go, get to zero, the drop off, that means all the wavelengths are the same. All the uh, wave sizes are the same. As I increase this to positive one, the waves in the middle are larger than the ones on the ends. So it just depends on what kind of effects you're looking for to drop off. So now you can see with the combination of a high drop-off and the offset value you get a pretty interesting uh, undulating effect. So then you have low bound and high bound. This is similar to the other tutorials that we've gone over so far in the nonlinear deformer uh, section of Maya. The low bound control controls how far up and down the lower half of the deformer, the sine deformer, will uh, take effect all the way up until we get to that middle line that we've looked at earlier. So if you wanted the sine deformer to only affect this part of the deformer, you can do that with the low bound controls. You can also increase this beyond the shape of the object even, like so. And if you were to then move the object through the deformer, it can change like this. which can be interesting in a situation where if you want a cylinder shape like this to travel through an object like this, you can have that this kind of effect happen, and as it gets through to the other end, it goes back to its normal cylinder shape. So that's kind of cool. And uh, with the deformer, low bound and high bound, they both work sim the similar with the high bound controlling the other end of the deformer. Like so. Then we have envelope. Envelope is essentially a percentage slider. So right now with envelope of 1, 100% of the effect 
of these values that I've added into all of these settings are being displayed. With an envelope of less than one, you're going to in decrease the percentage of the effect. Envelope of zero, like this, essentially turns the effect off. So if you want to keyframe the envelope of the sine wave to zero and then increase it to one, you're kind of animating the effect of the sine wave taking effect or turning on in your scene. Again, if I increase my envelope, you'll see as it gets closer to one, the effect takes more and more hold of the object. And at one, 100% 1 of the effect is in place. At 0.5, for example, half of the effect is in place, and so forth with the envelope uh, value. So those are all the settings of the sine deformer. Again, you can move these deformers and because the object is not uh, connected to it, the object stays put while the sign deformer kind of travels through it and affects it in this way. So if I select my sign deformer, let me go back to the other back, the normal background, let me fine with the uh, shaded view. If I go to Modify, Transformation Tools, Show Manipulator Tool, you'll see I get a handle here. Let me zoom out. This is the low bound handle here, high bound handle here, like so. Then you have this controller, which controls the offset. So you can see how this handle affects the offset value. And then coming off of the offset controller here, you have another handle, which controls the wavelength. And then this handle controls the amplitude. So without having to adjust settings in the channel box, you can use the Show Manipulator tool, get all these little handles in place, and you can manipulate the deformer pretty easily with all these little handles that the Show Manipulator tool gives you to work with. So that's essentially the sign deformer. I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And any requests for future tutorials, definitely let me know. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.